The way we make things is changing, radically. A new set of ideas and trends have emerged and combined to create a new industrial revolution, one led by people and human innovation. They're using ideas like collaborative design teams and leaner, more customizable manufacturing. Once upon a time, a factory made one thing. Now, a factory can make almost as many things as there are people to imagine them. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. As an extension of its range of specialized transport solutions, Barlow World Transport launched Barlow World Cranes in mid-March, noting that it was another step towards investing in niche products and services. Zandile Mavuso has the story. As part of its long-term goal to provide transport solutions across various sectors, Barlow World Transport has launched its new cranes division, which Barlow World Transport CEO, Neil Henderson, believes will add value to the company's business strategy. The formation of the cranes business has been a sort of evolution or a journey where we've identified the need to build a specialist transport business that not only does transport, but offers turnkey solutions allowing us to do transport as well as heavy lifting. We have a specialized division within the business that contains our abnormal and heavy abnormal transport business. So to complement and to enhance that service offering, we have launched Barlow World Cranes to provide our customers with a one-stop shop and a single service provider around heavy transportation and heavy lifting. Having identified the growing need for dedicated transport and lifting services, Balo World Cranes MD, Riboni Mutsati, says the division will be targeting new markets to cater to. Cranes business generally um, work in different markets. They, they work in the mining industry, and the mining industry in terms of lifting heavy machinery, assembly and stripping. They also work in construction industry, which basically looks at civil works as well as building of, um, of high-rises, etc. Um, the markets that we intend to, to look at is wind farm, which is quite new to South Africa, and this involves the installation of, of nacelles as well as the blades um, in the Eastern Cape as well as the Western Cape. Um, and lastly, what I referred to in my address was the oil and gas, and we all know that um, in Mozambique, for example, there's uh, big reserves around that, but also in South Africa there's talks around fracking, which will require heavy equipment. Showing confidence in the value and turnkey solution the new division will have on the new markets, Mutsatsi shares with us what the vision behind Balo World Cranes is and how it will be beneficial for different sectors. The vision for Balo World Cranes is to be the premier lifting solution service provider in sub-Saharan Africa. What we see is we've got clients in South Africa that are doing work outside the borders and therefore it is our wish to be able to follow those clients into those territories to do business in. Leading international airline Emirates is also a major cargo operation and had a significant presence at the recent Air Cargo Africa 2015 exhibition. Keith Campbell reports. Emirates Senior Vice President for Cargo Revenue Optimization and Systems is Pradeep Kumar. I asked him about his company's air cargo operations and Africa's place in its strategy. Emirates is the largest cargo operator in the world over the last three years continuously. Uh, we continue to expand our fleet. Right now we have 232 aircrafts in the fleet, which in include uh, 14 fighter cargo aircraft only. Uh, we serve all the continents from Dubai with direct non-stop to almost all the points. Africa is part of our growth, stra growth strategy. Over the last five to seven years, we have uh, included more and more destinations in Africa. At this point in time, we serve to 24 destinations in Africa. And with respect to South Africa, we've, we have now daily 350 tons of capacity to and from daily. And the last uh, opportunity flight operations we have into Africa is is Ouagadougou uh, in Burkina Faso. So we continuously explore more and more offline points. For offline points, when I say from a, we don't serve to the, some other points in by, by our own passenger passenger aircraft. So we our strategy is to look at more and more opportunities to those offline points, 
where we believe that we can introduce capacity and uh, develop the market and provide a direct air link for those countries, for those customers to, to explore the whole world. West Africa, over the last two years, we have expanded rapidly and we have, apart from the passenger flights operation, we fly with cargo only aircraft into Ogadugu and Lilongwe in Malawi and uh, based on some opportunity we undertake uh, many charter operations into Kinshasa, uh, Libreville and some of the other uh, destinations in West Africa. South Africa, um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have daily 350 tons of capacity to and from including one freight operations per week. Uh, into South Africa, the, uh, we move a steady movement of uh, cargo, general cargo from Asia, specifically from China, India, Southeast Asia. And from Europe, we have great demand, uh, mainly from Germany into South Africa. All this cargo coming into, uh, into Johannesburg, uh, we use Johannesburg as a gateway for the distribution and uh, from Johannesburg, we uh, distribute the cargo into nearby catchment areas. That is from an import point of view. From an export point of view, uh, from a traditional uh, dependency on the perishable or fresh produce traffic, over the last four to five years time, we have seen a great diversification a shift into industrialized manufactured products from South Africa, export point of view. Apart from the automobile parts and components, uh, we have a steady movement of pharmaceuticals, precious metals, and other uh, general cargo as well from South Africa. So South Africa is growing. Other news making headlines this week, Hyundai starts a local H100 assembly line and youth unemployment might remarginalize Africa. Hyundai Automotive South Africa has started rolling the 1.3-ton H100 light commercial vehicle off the newly established production line at the Commercial Vehicles Division's assembly plant in Benoni, Gauteng. We started with the medium commercial vehicles last year with the HT65 and 72, and that segment being quite small, and we, we're still a relatively small player in the medium commercial vehicle segment. We had to look at opportunities to increase the volume through the assembly plant, because that gives you the economies of scale. And the H100 was the obvious choice there, because it's similar to a truck. It's built like a truck chassis structure with the cab. So the assembly process can be done on the same line with the same uh, workers. So it just made it easier to bring in the H100. There are three key challenges impeding infrastructure development and economic growth in Africa, including government policies, the continent's position on global competitiveness and a high level of youth unemployment. The third challenge that we are facing is youth unemployment. You know the demographic structure of our continent. It is unique in the history of demographics, 75 percent and 25. So if we don't solve that youth unemployment, because the courts of young coming on the market are uh, quite important, and if we don't solve this youth unemployment issue, any of the things that we do will fail, and Africa faces the risk of being re-marginalized again. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.